dear listeners and viewers of the high tv you are all welcome again to another edition of the program the trumpet call of god the word of god says today if you hear the word of god had it not your hearts as the message is unveiled prepare your hearts to receive in the name of jesus the message captioned charity begins at home is a very common saying but that notwithstanding it is a very important message charity which is love is an exp it expresses itself in compassion in kindness in generosity in patience self-control and all the fruits of the spirit in short we say that the whole bible from genesis to revelation is tied on charity which is love for when that man who was following christ asked god that what is the greatest commandment god said the greatest commandment is this love god with all your strength with all your soul and with all your might and love your neighbor as yourself we are talking about that love now the home is the starting point of the gospel of christ that's why it is written that this charity this love which is the word of god begins somewhere and is at home just like as it's written that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom we only know where wisdom begins for anyone who does not fear god doesn't even know where to find wisdom the various homes form communities the homes put together forms communities and the communities form institutions which comprise of establishments such as schools churches recreation ground fraternity groups etc the home is the grassroots where christianity is practiced it is written the word of god is for correction for guidance and for rebuke this implies application of the word in the home that the word of god must first start must bring forth from the home our background where we are coming from be it you are a preacher everybody is called to preach his own gospel that's the gospel that you receive from the apostles of old the word of god that you read and meditate you have to practice it and where does this practice start in the homes this implies application of the word in the home charity is a pr in the practical sense involves sharing being kind and affectionate love is affection feeling for others having a positive mindset for others sharing is generosity provide for one another you say love your neighbor as yourself when god was asked about who is a, your neighbor he gave the parable of the good samaritan anyone who is by you who needs your help somebody needs your help in the sense that the weaknesses of that person need somebody else who will help him to build up to tend them to strength now what makes up the home the home we say charity begins at home so what builds up this home the home is made up of a divine ordained relationship <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it's a nucleus having close attachments <coughs> strong bond lot of familiarity in many things <clears throat> this familiarity give birth to the word family <clears throat> excuse me in a home we see a family made up of the father the mother and the child these three persons have their roles to play to build a home on the foundation laid by the apostles <coughs> the home must exhibit christ-like character in all their endeavors parents ought to submit unto god for the building and construction of the home construction means setting up of guiding principles to govern the home they must depend on God in constructing, in the building and construction. 
to put everything in the right place that's arrangement they do the adjustments standing on the word in psalms 127 which is if the lord does not build the builder build it in vain and if the lord does not watch the watchman watches in vain the home is a platform where we the members of the family are expected to bring their own contributions in the building and construction the journey of a thousand miles the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step the first step determines how successful you foot it on through the narrow path the way to heaven thus the first step of your ministerial calling is your home if you have a disorder home disorganized it therefore means god is not even the builder or the watchman of that your home <clears throat> disorder in homes is seen where charity in the first place is absent <clears throat> each individual is selfish strives to meet his own selfish desires neglecting the feelings of the other in this case rights are trampled upon serious dictatorship unruly misunderstanding misplaced priorities all this brings war in the home but if we follow the scriptures and practice charity which is love the home will be restored in righteousness and peace <clears throat> the home will be restored in righteousness and peace many homes in this end time are experiencing war as forewarned by the bible which stipulates the love for many will grow cold people will become lovers of themselves selfish and so carnal <clears throat> man has undergone serious defilement of the living temple of god through all forms of bestiality sodomy masquerading when we talk about masquerading people change their color when you change your color you're already a mask you're no longer yourself if you put tattoo all those things are masks you're hiding something take note if the home is not constructed if the home is not constructed with love it collapses in first corinthians 13 tells us that three things that last faith hope and love and the greatest among is love every individual in the family has a prescribed role to fulfill in the home ministry each has a calling and the training ground is the home it is written if you cannot manage the little who will give you more that is if you cannot accommodate the few members of this little nucleus called a home who will give you an institution to carry activities an example of the scripture that defines this role clearly is in ephesians 6 from verses 1 to 9 let us read it which define it defines the role of the child the role of the father and the role of the mother even the role of the husband children obey your parents in the lord for this is right Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Having enjoying long life on earth means that you live in fulfillment of God's will in your life. When you are derailed, you suffer the effects of the bad things that you do. So even if you live 100 years inside serious suffering, it doesn't mean that that is good long life. So when God says long life on earth, enjoyment of long life, is that one that you are living according to the will of God in your life. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. <clears throat> the lesson in Ephesians 6, 1 to 9, demonstrates charity in the form of give and take. While children are required to bring honor to their parents, as a result of obedience to their instructions if you walk in obedience god will satisfy you with long life fathers and mothers they bring in gentleness self-control in teaching not provoking a sin that will cause anger to boil so the first school is the home where we receive spiritual and physical education 
We learn obedience through what we encounter daily at home. While the parents teach by their example, children are so versed in copying what they see their parents practice. Children learn obedience by acting on the word of God, which is practiced at home. When we define learning, learning is an adaptive change of behavior due to past experience. So as the children see, they experience what the father and the mother they are doing, they learn, they, they are being transformed. <coughs> In the knowledge of God in Colossians 3 18 to 25 says therefore as God's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourself with compassion these are the ingredients of charity clothe yourself with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them together in perfect unity. So it's charity that binds all these virtues together. That is love. Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. Since as members of the body, we are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach. It means as you teach your children by example. As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The man is the father and the husband in the home. He is at the helm of authority in the home government. He is the head of state. He, he spearheads all activities, ensuring they tie with the principles of holiness and righteousness. He champions the promotion of charity. He has a greater sacrifice to make for his home to stand. That is building on the solid rock. Ephesians 5, 25 to 33 prescribes his role as a husband. The word of God says, love binds all the virtues that builds up the home, which include compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Implies the governor of the home, which is the man, works with love. And when he works with love, he lacks nothing. He will not be in one thing. Ephesians 25 20 to 33. Ephesians 5, 25 to 33. I read. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up to make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and present her to himself as a radiant church without stain, without wrinkle or blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, just as Christ does to the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. The responsibility of the husband in building and construction of the home is vividly described in this Ephesians 5, 25 to 31. He has to feed and care for the wife. At it written, as it is written, a man who does not feed his household is worse than an infidel. The care that is required from the man is that of security. You bring financial security, physical security, you are the watchman of that home to ensure that that hole doesn't break. You must send away the intruders, the strange spirits that come to bring down, to break down your home. You must dictate them and send them very far. Protect the rights of your wife. Protect her interest. Give her an enabling environment. Bear her body. You are the one to make her holy. Christ sacrificed this love to make the church holy. So if God is saying that you should be like Christ, that you do this sacrifice of love to present your wife holy, without blame, without wrinkle. Wrinkle is something that is showing anger. When you're very angry, obviously you see wrinkles appearing on your face. Wrinkles is having grudge. So many husbands are leading their wives to hell because no matter how you preach the word of God, when you are with anger and unforgiveness, just know that you go to hell. So it is high time for the men to give an enabling environment for this woman to come out of wrinkles, come out of grudges. You know, women are very good at keeping grudges against their husbands. 
Forgive no matter what. Follow the scriptures. Because without forgiveness, no one can make it. Now you present the woman holy by removing these wrinkles, these grudges that he has for you. Go before her, for let her forgive you, and you try to, to, to live a righteous life. Two, take away the blemishes and the wrinkles. Make her admirable to yourself. God loved his church until he died and cleansed the church, presenting him as a right hand church, which means make the woman admirable to yourself. Anything that she doesn't know, the blemishes that she has, the spots she has, clean them. If she doesn't know how to cook, it's a spot. Teach her, send her to school to learn how to cook. If she doesn't know how to present herself, there are many things nowadays. Knowledge has increased. Train her the way you want to your taste. Leave your parents. That's another instruction which we find inside this Ephesians 5. For a man will leave his father and mother. It doesn't mean that you abandon them. You don't cut out for them. You don't provide them food. No. Leaving your parents, that is, you have to take a step out of the government, of the regime of your father. Because now you are becoming a man. You have to create your own regime. You have to create your own footprint. Your, memori your memorial is your name that you will place on this earth. Start your own home. Build on unity and love. This is the home which we bear which will carry your memories even after your departure from the earth. Abraham left his father, his father's household, took his wife and fulfilled the promise of God upon his life. So it means that you leave this attachment of the home government where you are coming from because you are supposed to start another new one which will bear your own name and your history. You have to write your own history. You take a step forward Thus, to live means that you have to be liberated from your father's government as a son under his authority and become a man establishing your own government, being the head. If your father and mother are still dictating to you, spelling out how you should run your own home affairs, it means you are not yet a man, you are a boy. For in marriage, you say, a man will leave his own father and mother. So when you are mature to be a man, you need to have your own abode. You must make your own name in this earth. In the nutshell, the head of the home government is the man. That is why he is the one carrying the mantle of love. He's the perpetrator of this charity that we talk about. This love, which is the everlasting covenant of God, he's the one carrying it like a jewel. You have to preserve it so that in the end you say, I have fought a good fight. I have run the race. I have finished my course. And a crown is waiting for me in heaven. So we have to preserve this word of God, which is the love. The word of God from Genesis to Revelation is grounded in this word called love. <clears throat> love is a sacrifice. We see how God sacrificed because of the love he has for us. He sacrificed his only begotten son. Someone may ask, how can I show this love? You can see it clearly. The credentials of love in Ephesians, I mean, in 1 Corinthians 13 from verses 4 to 8. I just named them. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love is not rude. Love is not self-seeking not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth, always protects, always trusts, always hope, always preserves. Love never fails. If you scan through these credentials of love, you will understand that it constitutes the whole good news. That is the Bible. It is love that establishes the home and points it to the way, the narrow way, the way to eternal glory. Love entails sacrifice. That's why we say, enter through the narrow way. This narrow way is that great sacrifice that you do. You let go because of another man. You feel for others until you can sacrifice your time, your energy for them. In order for them to be presentable, to be holy, righteous, without spots and wrinkles. Men are called to sacrifice time and energy and self to keep the home free from stain, blemish, and wrinkles. Men, you are the home priests. That is, you are the pastors of your home. 
given the mandate to preserve your generation and in the end give account on the day of judgment the mothers the wives and the women of the home we see it in genesis in the book of genesis when god created man he says it's not good for a man to live alone he created eve and said let me create a helper suitable for the man the word suitable means that the help that the woman is required to give is to drive this goal of the man that is to meet the mission and vision of the husband not to work against the mission and the vision <clears throat> for the woman to carry out this responsibility to demonstrate charity at home she ought to work in submission as we see in Ephesians 5 from verses 22 say wife submit unto thy husband for they are the head submit under his authority which means respect him obey him follow his instruction tie to his vision and mission in order for that home to be established because he is the divine ordained authority god has already made it that way it's not reverse by submission she ties to the vision she presents her husbands she represents her husband even in his absence at home do not be that type of a wife or a mother that when the father is not there you begin to give different doctrine to the children that one is bringing war to the home <clears throat> do not change the agenda you must tie according to the agenda stipulated by the man The woman, that is the wife, she is required to give respect to her husband no matter his physical portfolio, no matter his status. For scripture cannot be altered or broken. Honor him. The word of God says, give honor to whom honor is, de is deserved. We honor authorities. No doubt. Every authority must be honored. That's why sometimes we say, His Excellency. We say, the Lord Mayor. We say... We call them names because we honor them. His Excellency, the Governor, His Excellency, the President, and so on. That is how you, you honor the priest, the head of state that is in your house, which is the husband. The first authority is the husband. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Don't call him baby during the day. That one is permitted in your private times. That is no problem. But call him those names of honor especially in front of the children make them to know that he is the authority honor is not only by names by action how do you greet him even in the way you greet how do you cook for him you have to cook special you have to have a special touch of the type of food that you cook for him that even when he closes his eyes as he's eating the food he knows that this one is from my wife do not abandon everything for the house help for if it's the house help that is cooking everything the man will lose touch of you he will lose feeling of you before you know he's distracted you must even no matter how you are busy doing work out there create a day that you will cook your own delicious that your husband loves wash his clothes no matter even if he's taking everything to the cleaner you are supposed to sometimes wash some of the things in order to show that love and affection. Trim his nails, shave him, dust his coat, check his appearance before he leaves for work. Even if he is a hunter, there is always an attire for a particular trade. Is he putting on the right attire so that he will be protected? Romans 13, 7 says, give to everyone what they, they deserve, honor to whom honor is due and respect manage his estate make sure everything in the agenda is accomplished that's the work of the woman you are the principal home builder you see it in proverbs 14 1 say the wise woman builds her home while the foolish one with her own hands she tears it down use wisdom to uphold to support the mantle just as how aaron supported the mantle of moses so you do that don't give room for home breakers that intruders, spies. The enemy has waged spies against homes. They come in a form of friends. They'll start asking you, how does your husband treat you? Hey, this, this, that. This is not how it ought to be. Just know that they are spies. The more you explain the problem you are going through, take note, they are looking for a way. It becomes a door for them to march into your home. <clears throat> so, listen back to what your husband is telling you. The thing that God has handed to him, that mantle, he will tell you. 
It's just like how God told the Adam that do not touch the tree at the center of the garden. And when the snake wanted to deceive Eve, he said, what did God tell you people? He said, well, I was not there, but God told my husband. So God tells the man because he is the head. God is saying, if you listen to the snake, that is Lucifer, you will be deceived to shatter your own home. The snake comes with a deceptive way. Truth, it can be through a friend, it can be through a family member. In the nutshell, woman, submit to his ruling based on charity. That is love. Do not oppose him, for God is watching. Walk according to the scriptures. Do not be too demanding. Limit your expectations. Improve tactics to win his continuous attention. Be attractive, not repulsive. Keep yourself attractive. Be neat. Be presentable. Talk gently. When you are too wild, you scare him. Sometimes you put these uh, uh, things that we put on our heads, like we call grave. You put it, it will last for about three months. It is thinking. He will be afraid to tell you that that is thinking because he will think that you feel insulted. So for that reason, change up. Be clean. Keep yourself neat and presentable. No matter in your own little way. You must not be gorgeous. The word of God in First Peter says, Let your beauty not come only from your outward adornment of wearing of jewelries and braiding of hair. But it should come from your quiet spirit. To conclude, charity begins at home. It's an indication that you cannot preach effectively if you do not practice. The home is a primary place of practice where the individuals, father, child, mother, and their various areas of jurisdiction. The home is the theater that is the training ground. If the training is ineffective, it will produce bad results. Instead of meeting the goal, that is God's will and purpose for your life, <clears throat> it will bring shame and dishonor and as such, disqualification before the judgment throne. Any form of love shown out of the home. Meanwhile, war is at home, which is the first government. If you cannot manage the first government, there is war, confusion, disorder, lack of charity, no kindness. Anything that you want to show out there that is love, doing philanthropy, and neglecting the first government, which God is saying that charity begins at home, is hypocrisy and leads to self-destruction. It's wasted years. After providing warmth, security, energy for strangers, and your household suffers lack. Your household suffers lack. Last. These things is all wasted years. It's all wasted years. So, there are so many people who are fond of showing good out there. They are so kind, sharing everything they have. But when you get to their homes, their children are lacking. Their family is mourning. There is war in the house. They go and preach on the pulpit. Pastors, preachers, they preach on the pulpit. But when you get back to the home, it's nothing to write home about. So the voice, the trumpet call of God, is calling us who have derailed to come back to toe the line, to know that the charity, the word of God that we carry, which is the mantle of love, should begin at our homes. Remain blessed in Jesus' name.